Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, April 10th, 2018 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 6th of April at 2.30 p.m. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Three supervisors present. Thank you. Approval of the March 20th, 2018 journal. You need to hit your. Okay, sorry. Got the mic. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Is there a second to that motion? Yeah, it's not coming on my on my screen though. Uh, Jim Glavin. Okay, this? Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you. It's not coming up on my screen, Jim. I can't see. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. aye. Or <laughs> vote. <laughs> Now you can vote. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. We have none. Public addresses. We have none. Letters, communications, and announcements. I have one. I have uh, a note for the county board from the family of Sue Prochek, thanking you for your kind expression of sympathy and support. Thank you. Our sympathy, Ed. County administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Good, Good evening. facilities into one cost opportunity for the community so uh, Greg did a real nice job with that and I've heard some nice compliments from not only some folks in our organization but across the state who have read his article next slide if you haven't been there the last month or so you will 
just be amazed how beautiful that entrance looks. The furnishing is now going in. This is the front entrance where the administra administrative support staff will be, and it's really taking shape. Uh, Greg and Jim and all the staff involved have done a nice job with the layout and uh, just just looking sharp. Next slide. Carpeting's down. Uh, nice color, I think, with the woodwork and just has a nice flow and a nice feel to it. Next slide. This is going to be the Transportation Committee's meeting room. We were hoping this might entice Mark Winkle not to leave, but we weren't successful. Uh, this is just a beautiful meeting area. I think the Transportation Committee and others are going to appreciate it. Next slide. This is an area that is creating a little bit of a delay, and that is the lube piping. A uh, pretty extensive system, as you can just see from this one snapshot, but it's really going to help with efficiency with maintaining the trucks and equipment. This was something that we learned when we went and looked at other transportation complexes in and out of the state. And uh, of course, Greg and Jim determined this would be a nice improvement, and I really think it's going to be. So they're still in the midst of making some enhancements here. Next slide. Uh, that's actually where the, the lube will be stored. That's the lube piping room. Next slide. This is the mechanic shop, and as you can see, they, they have all of their equipment laid out as they're laying out all this piping and getting that all in order. Next slide. This is the welding shop area. You may recall as you walk through the, the mechanic area, you get all the way to the far end or south end, and there's a nice separated area for welding. Next slide. This is the new unheated storage building. I was actually surprised to see this photo without anything in it yet because I know Greg has got everybody geared up to be uh, moving into the facility, and my bet is there's some equipment in there right now. But as you can see, it is all done and looking good. Next slide. We're working on the fence, the perimeter fencing. Most of the fence is up, but the gates aren't necessarily in place, so that's in play. Next slide. This is a snapshot of the first round of items that are going to be sold through the auction. And of course, Greg's team's involved with this, as is Bernie Romer, our purchasing agent. I know they just had an auction, I think, last week. And of course, getting rid of uh, parts and supplies that we have no need for or have been around forever, rather than moving them and storing them elsewhere. Next slide. This is the basement of the North 23rd headquarters. And uh, it's already quite a bit of it's cleared out, whether it's through the auction or some of the items that have been moved. Next slide. So that's a little heads up on the transportation complex. We are under budget. We're a little bit later than we had hoped. Originally, we were hoping to move in in April. But as you know, a project of this size, uh, <coughs> things happen. We're getting real close to wrapping it up. And Greg is feeling pretty confident. Uh, confident that he's going to have the full team in there by the end of May. In fact, he's shooting for May 21st. So within budget parameters and overall, things have gone very, very well. If the chairman and vice chairman could join me, please. So every two years, we generally see a couple of new faces. Some people decide to retire and move on or maybe defeated an election. That didn't happen this year. We didn't have anyone defeated, but we do have three board members who have decided to move on after providing a service on the county board. And we're going to start with acknowledging our friend Supervisor Libby Oji, if she could come forward, please. In fact, as Libby's making her way up here, if you all crank your necks to the back, you'll see a familiar face former and now new County Board Supervisor Mike Oji, who is going to be joining us. And obviously public service runs in the family. I think it was great that uh, Mike encouraged his daughter to run and she was successful. And next to Mike is his wife Becky and their son Spencer. So we appreciate them joining us this evening. Supervisor Libby Oji was elected to the County Board in 2014. So just four years ago. Does it feel like more or less, Libby? It feels longer, yes. She served on the Planning, Resources, Agriculture, and Extension Committee, or PRECOM, and for, for three years, and on the Law Committee for two years. As I mentioned, Libby is the daughter of Mike Oji, who will be returning next week. And as 
as far as we know, Libby has the distinction of being the youngest individual ever elected to be a county board supervisor here in Sheboygan County. Uh, during her ten, uh, tenure on PRACOM, Supervisor OG provided oversight and policy direction as a liaison committee member for the Planning and Conservation Department, Register of Deeds, and UW Extension. As a member of the Law Committee, she provided oversight and policy direction to the Sheriff's Department, Clerk of Courts, District Attorney, Medical Examiner, and Court Commissioner. <clears throat> Libby was taking classes at UW Sheboygan when she was first elected to the board. And then the job hunt began, and I think there might have been one or two or three different jobs throughout that. Uh, sh so she didn't have the same level of flexibility that some of us have in this room, and she did miss a few meetings. However, she told me how much she really enjoyed serving on the board, particularly the PRACOM committee. Libby supported the establishment of the Amsterdam Dunes Wetland Mitigation Bank and Preservation Area that will forever be a tremendous accomplishment of the board and her involvement. She also supported additional biking and walking paths such as the beautiful trail along Taylor Drive in Sheboygan. And she shared with me just yesterday that she enjoyed volunteering at our county fair with the 4-H program, whether it was a judge or helping out and supporting our the young people in 4-H, which is really cool. So please join Chairman Wagner and Vice Ch Chairman Marthenzi and I in thanking and recognizing Libby Oji for four years of public service to the people of Sheboygan County. Thank Thanks, Libby. Would Supervisor Fayer Rayner please come forward? And for the record, she asked me to keep this short and sweet, so I'm going to honor that. Supervisor Fager Rayner was appointed to the county board on May 21st, 2013, and was subsequently elected two consecutive terms. Supervisor Rayner served on the HR committee for one year and the law committee for five years. As a member of the law committee, she provided oversight and policy direction for the sheriff's department, clerk of courts, district attorney, medical examiner, and court commissioner. During her tenure, major initiatives undertaken by those departments included establishing combined dispatch and upgrading the emergency radio system, about a $15 million investment in our system, changing the elected coroner position to an appointed medical examiner position, adding an assistant district attorney position to work with the Health and Human Services Department to promote child welfare, and recommending an addition to the detention center as part of the five-year capital plan, which we know we still have in front of us as a major initiative. So please join Chairman Wagner, Vice Chairman Marthenzi, and me in recognizing Supervisor Uraner for five years of public service to the people of Sheboygan County. And would Supervisor Mark Winkle please come forward. <clears throat> 26 years of service on the county board. 26 years. I think um, Carl mentioned before the meeting that there are seven supervisors who have been here 20 plus years. and. Uh, he's one of them, so we're losing a very experienced veteran on the board. Mark was elected to, to the county board in 1992 and served most recently on the finance and transportation committees. Throughout his tenure, he also served on the executive committee, law committee, property committee, planning and resources committee, health care center building committee, and the jail building committee. Suffice it to say that after 26 years, there is little that Supervisor Winkle has not been involved with. He has been a strong supporter of improving upon our transportation system, the airport, and all of our county facilities. In fact, Supervisor Winkle has also been a very strong proponent of law enforcement and our emergency response. This was demonstrated by his support for the Combined Dispatch Center and the radio upgrade projects and his support for the Sheriff's Department acquiring a Bearcat rescue vehicle, which is a key tool when responding to high-rate incidents. As a strong fiscal conservative, Mark supported the one half percent county sales tax in order to help maintain our local roads and bridges, reduce borrowing, provide property tax relief, and continue to be fiscally responsible. 
Mark also supported the construction of the new transportation complex, consolidating three facilities into one. Speaking of con consolidation and fiscal responsibility, during Mark's tenure, the county board consolidated register and probate with the clerk of courts, the comprehensive health care center with Rocky Knoll, the printing department with information technology, we privatized Sunny Ridge, you consolidated UW Extension with UW Sheboygan, property listing with the treasurer, land and water with planning, payroll with finance, the airport with highway, child support with the health and human services department, and city dispatch with the county sheriff's department. All of that happened during Mark's tenure. As a result of these initiatives and the leadership and support of Mark and the county board, Sheboygan County has established a pretty impressive fiscal track record. We have healthy fiscal reserves, we have an excellent bond rating, and our total payroll today is less than it was 10 years ago. Our total payroll today is less than it was 10 years ago. On average, over the past 10 years, property taxes have increased less than 1% a year. These things just don't happen. It takes work, collaboration, leadership. In brief, Supervisor Winkle, he's a common sense, no-nonsense supervisor with an unc uncanny memory for numbers. He has a good heart, good intentions, and worked in collaboration with his fellow county board supervisors and department heads to help make good things happen. Please join Chairman Wagner, Vice Chairman Marthenzi, and me in recognizing Mark for 26 years of dedicated public service to the people of Sheboygan County. for those kind words. 26 years ago when I came here, I was a young man. Tonight I'm leaving as an old man. And when I came here originally, I just had uh, one goal in mind, that was to restore respect to the third district seat. My predecessor was a snowbird. But in the 26 years I've been here, I've seen a lot of changes in the size and the scope of county government and the county board. And the changes that were brought about were brought about by this very august board. I didn't always agree with the changes, but I think without exception, the changes we've made were for the better of our citizens. It's been a privilege and it's been an honor to serve the citizens of this county. I look forward to retiring. And uh, thank you, good night, and go Brewers. Speaking of age, uh, we did get a chance to pull up a couple of photos. Yes, yes, sir. The other thing I take away from 26 years here is the wonderful friendships that I made, and I will cherish them forever. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Next slide, please. Well, what do we have here? This is the property committee in 1992 when Mark Winkle, who probably was the youngest county board supervisor ever elected at that time. Uh, I don't know, he's always looked young, I'll tell you that. But this is from 1992, some familiar faces up there. Next slide. Property committee in 94. Vern Gross was the uh, building services director when I started in 99. You see some familiar faces. Next slide. The property committee in 96. Julie Glancy, our county clerk, who was with us for, I think, over 30 years. Next slide. In 2000, at that point, Mark was donning a pretty cool set of sunglasses. <laughs> Next slide. Mark was a member of the executive committee, vice chairman of the county board. Next slide. On the law committee. 
Next slide. Transportation Committee, dearly departed Jack Van Dixhorn. Good people who have worked real hard to get that transportation complex going. Next slide. 2014. Next slide. Mark, thanks for 26 years. We appreciate it. In your packets, two documents I wanted to quickly touch on. Uh, authorizing the Finance Department to balance department accounts. The Finance Committee is obviously very familiar with this. There is a great deal of emphasis on department heads and committees to work within budget parameters. Obviously, the County Board establishes the budget every year, and as your staff, we need to work within those parameters, and the Liaison Committee obviously works with the department heads as well to provide that oversight. And we continue to have department heads who year after year deliver. They work within those parameters and have del delivered some positive variances, which certainly are better than the alternative. As you can see, if you studied this, every year is a different year. A budget is not a crystal ball. But we're very pleased that uh, with your approval this evening, the finance director will proceed and, and and making the necessary adjustments, but overall it's a little over a three million dollar positive variance. And as you've heard me say during the budget development process, our largest departments are so key to that success in the budget development, whether it's meeting your goals and targets or working within budget parameters. And I'll just touch on a few of them. I see the sheriff here, Corey Raisler. Corey, I think, is going to be a tremendous sheriff. So pleased with his leadership. And the Sheriff's Department has struggled with staffing, and we've had to provide some overtime in the detention center in particular, but that can also happen with the deputies depending on uh, what work is in, in play or whether it, something happens at their end of the shift and they need to see it through, but it's predominantly the detention center. So the Sheriff's Department did have a negative variance, but when you think of a $20 million budget that the Sheriff is responsible for, it certainly isn't anything that we're not able to manage. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the Health and Human Services Department, over a $30 million budget, and Tom Agerbrecht, our Health and Human Services Director, uh, right out of the gate was concerned that there was going to be a, some struggles with working within budget parameters this year. And immediately he enlisted the, his management team, he consulted with the Health and Human Services Committee, and year-end was able to produce a 900,000 positive variance because of some of the management techniques that they put into place, whether it was making adjustments, holding staffing, what have you. So a real credit to them because I know at the end of the first quarter, they did not think it was going to go that way. Rocky Knoll continues to be a shining star. Uh, Kayla's doing a great job as our new administrator there, but good team in place, providing a very important service, and Rocky Knoll exceeded expectations and came in with a, a positive variance. And then the Highway Department, Greg and his team, they're a stretch about as thin as anybody can be right now with all the additional road work they're doing and moving into a new transportation complex, everything involved. Local units of government are asking for more assistance than ever before, and Highway had a positive variance as well. So just wanted to point out that overall we're looking very favorable. And then finally, I wanted to bring your attention to amending county compensation program. There's been a few steps along the way here, and I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. The ordinance essentially follows through on what we need to do as part of the budget process. You establish a budget, you build in so much of an increase for our employees, and there's tables in here that need to be updated to reflect those annual increases. And that's largely what it does. But as we were looking at this, there were a couple of practices between the HR department and committee that were in play, so working with Corp Council and really our internal cabinet committee, we made some refinements to um, make sure that it follows more the process that we're currently taking. And during that discussion, I looked at the elected officials area and saw a couple of things. One, we had two elected officials that were going to be on the ballot this year, so obviously this is your one window of opportunity to make any adjustment in their salary. That only happens every four years. And then secondly, as I looked at that, I thought to myself, as it stands right now, 
we would apply an across-the-board CPI increase for all of them, regardless of their roles, responsibilities, whether the department has added staff, reduced staff, we treat them all exactly the same, and the CPI increase would be static for four years. So I asked the HR department to look at what other counties are doing, and what we learned is that they're providing graduated increases, just as all other employees receive. And I also learned that many of our peers are paying or compensating these important officials more money than we are. Now we can't evaluate the individuals in them because we don't know if Corey is gonna be the next sheriff after this election or Melody is gonna be the next clerk of courts. We don't know. What we do know is we're very fortunate to have a sheriff with 26 years of experience in the department and a clerk of courts with I think 30 years of experience in the department who are really, really good. So I personally hope they're gonna be successful in their reelection. But we didn't look at their individual performance, as we do for all other employees. But we did look at the roles and responsibilities of the department, and both have taken on more. So then we looked and compared other counties, and I want to draw your attention to a summary sheet that's in your document that is entitled, County Administrator and Human Resources Director Recommendation <coughs> Based on Provisions of Chapter 47. Because again, there's been a couple of steps in play. So by ordinance, this is the county board's opportunity to adjust these salaries. It needs to happen tonight by ordinance, and it's locked in for four years. Had we followed the status quo, we'd be looking at the top box. We would have applied a CPI increase, and they would have been frozen in the same amount for four years. At the HR committee meeting, the HR director and I recommended a different approach. After comparing and contrasting the wages that these department heads are receiving in comparison to their peers, after thinking about just fairness and the fact that if we want to treat them as much as we can like all of our other employees, we're not giving all of our employees a static CPI increase. That's being considered as part of the the equation as part of the budget development process, but if you look at the bottom on that sheet, there's quite a difference between a CPI increase and the budgeted average increase that the county board applied each year. So we applied that in our recommendation. Furthermore, we built in a graduated increase each year so they're not falling further and further behind their, their peers in other counties. Otherwise, if you lock in the same amount for four years, every time you look at it, they're farther and farther behind. So we discussed this with the HR committee. We had a good discussion at the meeting, and uh, the recommendation was to build in that every time we have elected officials before they file papers, that we will look at the roles and responsibilities of the department. Who will? I will. The HR director will. The HR department will be engaged gathering that information. <coughs> We happen to have a little experience with that because we do the same for all our other department heads. The HR committee weighs in. Ultimately, it is the county board that will make that final decision. So the HR committee approved it. They recommended the ordinance before you with the changes you see with this increase. We then took it a little further. Now, because a number of other counties are all uh, putting in their wage information for peers, Penny and Jean looked at what 10 other counties are doing that are similar in size to Sheboygan County. We use the same 10 uh, counties that we use when we go to the leadership forum and co compare and contrast us to get a, a perspective of what's fair, what's reasonable. And there we saw, okay, we took a step in the right direction at the HR committee. We built in a manner to treat all of our employees, including the elected officials, more fairly. It's not gonna be a one size fits all. We're looking at, at the roles and responsibility of the department. We're looking at comparables, what have you. But we didn't have as much information. So when we went to the finance committee, you'll see the third box. What did we build in? We built in an equity adjustment for the county clerk and sheriff. Again, those are the only two that are being considered. The others won't be considered for two more years. These are the only two. 
that are engaged with this decision tonight. The Finance Committee looked at the comparables and saw that even after building in an equity adjustment and then applying the same budgeted across the board increases that we've applied to all other employees throughout the county except uh, deputies, they have a contract. You'll see that that will beef up their salary to 80,000 for the clerk of courts and 109 for the sheriff. It gets them more aligned with their peers. But even after what is a nice increase, it still places them ninth out of 10th compared to all the other counties. So is it a step in the right direction? Absolutely. Is it treating them more fairly? Yes. Is it taking a thoughtful approach, reviewing roles and responsibilities, peers, internal, ex external? Yes. Will the county board make the final decision? Yes. So tonight I hope that you will support the proposal before you. I want to thank the Human Resources Committee, Department and Finance Committee and Department for their assistance with this. I also want to thank the Sheriff and the Clerk of Courts because you bet we got their input and kept them involved in this discussion. And I appreciate not only their input, but their support for the proposal. Hopefully that helps folks understand a little bit how the process ensued. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Next is consideration of committee reports, executive committee resolution number 27. Regarding authorizing the finance committee and finance director to balance over budget departmental accounts, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Otten, did you push your button? Okay, we, we've got a technical glitch up here, so. Supervisor Winkle. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Is there a second? Yeah, you're gonna have to raise, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to raise your hand because it isn't coming up who's, if you just raise your hand then I'll see it. I, I apologize, something's wrong up here. Supervisor Wegeman. Uh, thank you, I'll, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Is there any discussion? Oh, hit it. Supervisor Uraner. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. You know, this is probably one of our most important documents and, uh, you know, when I first joined the county board, I, I didn't even realize it because it was kind of even hard to see um, since, since it's so very small. Um, but it, it really um, is the, the, the fact that we are over budget uh, significantly. Um, from my memory, we have been over budget significantly, um, I'm sorry, under budget significantly, under budget by over $3 million, um, under budget significantly for the last at least three out of the last five years, and oftentimes by the $4 million. Um, so I just just wanted to make sure from my financial standpoint, this is a really significant piece. And I did ask the question relating to sales tax because we, we ended up getting an extra $2.6 million when you consider all 12 months of uh, sales tax. And that piece is not included in, in this overage. So that, because that is going to the uh, capital, uh, it is going to the capital, capital plan fund balance as the sales tax or transportation fund balance. So it's, it, it's really important, I think, to understand where we stand in relationship to budget. And you know, if we consistently have this $4 million overage, which is great, um, and have had that for several years, um, we really need to look at considering reducing the property tax and be more in line with some of our peer counties, such as La Crosse and Eau Claire, when it comes to that per capita rate. Right now, we are really standing in more in the average range. So we have some good metrics to do in order to make those changes. And just want to reiterate how important to, to see that variance there from a understanding how we're doing as a county from a financial perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Reiner. Is there any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll go to vote. Please vote aye or nay.
Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, finance committee resolution number 28. Regarding authorizing human resources committee to enter, and enter into labor contract with Sheboygan County Law Enforcement Employees Association, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to adopt. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Second. Supervisor Conrardi. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Conrardi. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Supervisor Epping. Uh, thank you, Chairman Wagner. On the face value of this, it looks like there's quite substantial increases. I can't uh, see anything. This uh, contract, uh, 275 for first year, 25 and 25 for the next two years. On face value, that looks pretty good or pretty expensive. But I've been assured by speaking with the uh, HR director, Gene Gallimore, that this is within the parameters of, of what is being had by other law enforcement agencies in the parable uh, 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 status and uh, I will vote in favor of this and uh, to keep our law enforcement uh, uh, working the way it should be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Is there any other question or discussion? Supervisor Urainer. I will also approve this, but I just wanted to point out, um, I've asked the question a few times, how do our metrics compare to other counties when it co comes to our cost, the fiscal responsibility part? And since this is one of our bigger departments, I, I would hope that we would at some point take a look at our cost comparison per capita with our peer counties instead of doing some of those metrics with some of the smaller budget costs um, that, that really aren't going to move the needle. But if we did some comparison, which, which I have asked for over the years and have been told we, don't, we just don't do that, um, and business does it, it it's makes sense to do it, um, um, it would help our county. So I'm hoping we can see that change down the road. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Rayner. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, ready to vote. Please push your I or nay button. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 29. Regarding authorizing planning and conservation department to apply for tree planting grant recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Is there a second? Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Is there any discussion or questions? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Please push your aye or nay button. Motion is also approved unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> Resolution number 12. Regarding amending county compensation program revisions, committee recommendation to amend per committee report and an act as amended. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to enact. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Is there a second? <clears throat> Supervisor Epping. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman Wager. I'd like to second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Are there any questions or discussion? Supervisor Glavin. On uh, page seven of this, uh, it crosses out the county clerk and the human resources director from calculating the anticipated salaries. Why is that necessary? Why is that crossed out? Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear you. Thank you. Somebody like to respond to that? I... Yeah, Adam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it will involve the county administrator and the human resources director and department with making these recommendations, which 
uh, makes it a little bit more objective. Generally, you don't have an elected official recommending their own salary. I'm not, I, I don't think that's very common across the state. But in this instance, it would be the county administrator working with the Human Resources Department, making recommendations to the full county board. And uh, we have some experience in that manner. Thank you, Adam. Any other questions or comments? Supervisor Uraner. And uh, a similar question on line um, 104 and 105 on page 4. Um, the county board is crossed out for approval and, it, uh, it, and the um, county administrator is, is added in. Um, what would be the purpose of that change? Carl, do you have that one? Yes, I would defer to Jean. That was uh, one of her initiatives. Jean, you want to come up here with a mic? <clears throat> okay, thank you. If you'll notice, uh, again, on lines, I believe, as you mentioned, 104 and 105, it, it is crossed out. But if you go down a few lines, you'll notice that it's put back in. So it says on line 108 and 109, in making the proposed salary schedule adjustment to the county board. So again, the county board would be the final decision here. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Prochak. Mm -hmm information um, to make sure I'm clear. I thought that this also was supposed to come back to the uh, HR committee as most salaries do too. I don't see it being referred uh, as after the administrator uh, and the human resources director make the report. The report comes directly to the county board. I thought it was to come to the human resources committee and then to the county board. Am I mistaken or did I miss it somewhere in this paragraph? I, I can address that. Uh, Corporation Council, Car Carl Bissing will answer that. The current ordinance does not provide that it goes back to the HR committee and then to the board for whatever reason it had been, uh, I suppose, as a courtesy, but it isn't in our current ordinance. So when we amended it, we didn't change it to take it away from going to the HR committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, sure. This, uh, Administrator Payne, you can, I got your mic on now. As was mentioned, it wasn't in the last one, so it wasn't something we removed, but it's fully our expectation to continue to work with the Human Resources Committee and the Finance Committee before we come to the full county board. We'd be foolish not to. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, everybody. Appreciate Thank you, it. Supervisor Prochek. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, if not, we would be... Oh, okay, Supervisor so Rainer. Uh, okay, th th this might be a long shot, but I, I realize that the way this is worded, it's going to come to the county board in the budget. And um, so from my understanding, then it's just there. We won't really see percentages. We, it's kind of buried in that budget. Is, is that correct? It's, it's not like we're going to see a sheet that says this is the, uh, the information. It's just kind of buried in, the, yeah, in this huge budget without really a clear layout of that information, if I'm understanding this correctly. Okay. No, that's fine. Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we certainly will not be bearing any wage or benefit increases. In fact, that's probably the strongest driver of our costs every year if we're going to apply a CPI increase or a 2% increase. So the approach we take is working with the Human Resources Committee, the Finance Committee, and the Executive Committee. We establish budget assumptions, and wages and benefits are always identified right up front. Then at the leadership forum, as you know, we focus on those wage and benefit increases as well. And then ultimately, going through the liaison committees, the executive committee, the finance committee, the HR committee, we will come to the full county board with a proposed budget. And uh, nothing will be buried, I assure you. It's, it's always front and center because that's one of the key costs that we struggle grappling with 
each year when, when you have one size fits all net new construction increases or caps even to apply a, a CPI increase or 2% increase or in this case with the law enforcement officers a 2.5% increase it's always a challenge but we obviously want to maintain good people. Hang on a second. Get your mic on. Go ahead. Okay. As a follow-up, will it be a separate document similar to what we're seeing now? Will it be a separate um, document, and, and perhaps we can lay that out in this uh, in this resolution that we will be the board will be getting a separate uh, document, uh, a separate, uh, or, I guess this uh, or an ordinance, uh, so that so that it is very clear uh, what what the wage changes are. I, th I think, uh, well, I'll just quickly Attorney Bissing will respond. Uh, let me just say this, Carl. Every department's budget that the liaison committees ultimately approve and forward on to the finance committee have wage and benefits as a line item. So that's all in every single department's budget right there, right up front. Okay crystal clear. Every liaison committee should have a good feel for that. And then of course, when we establish budget targets, we generally come up with what we feel is a reasonable range of an increase. And usually it's been in about that 2% increase. I'm, I'm sorry, thank you. Thank you. Carl, did you want to add something? If you're talking about the grid for salary ranges at section 4703, is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, yes. We, that the board will not be getting this grid. It will just be kind of buried in that budget. The, which the, the board hasn't gotten an updated grid since you enacted this ordinance. On an annual basis, it has been updated and maintained by the HR department. Okay. Uh, and then whenever we do update chapter 47, we capture the most current grid that's uh, prepared by the commit by the uh, department so that's not a departure from anything that we're already doing supervisor wrapping thank you chairman Wigner. Um, unless I'm mistaken I'm seeing the county administrator placed into this uh, uh, um, doing doing these uh, proposed uh, salaries and stuff like that in association with the, the um, human resources. Um, I have full confidence in the county administrator, full confidence in human resources, but I kind of wonder whether we're just hearing, we're going to hear one voice instead of a multitude of voices uh, like we would hear from other committees that, that are involved in this because you know, according to the to the way things are setting, um, human resources they're answerable to the county county administrator all the time. Anyhow, now is there going to be un, undue influence there? And I'm not saying that there's going to be. I'm just saying that's one of my concerns in seeing seeing this uh, uh, language change along uh, put in also with this uh, uh, monetary change. So, can can there be? Uh, uh, a response of some sort for, for my concerns in that set, uh, are, basis. Are, Thank you. Are Thank you, you referring to the uh, section on elected officials or are you referring to the language about setting the budget? I'm talking about the language that puts the county administrator and the human resources in at set, setting the amounts. Well, if, if you're talking about the portion that is in 4703-1 with the across the board pay ranges, uh, the county board is the ultimate determiner of that. And it doesn't really matter from my perspective whether the HR department is stated alone or in concert with the county administrator, except for the fact that the county administrator is uh, an essential part of creating the overall county budget needs to be incorporated into the uh, uh, financing of the pay raises or, or pay ranges. Uh, Supervisor Conrad, Tom, did you have something you wanted to say? I'll pass. Okay. 
Supervisor Conrady. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All I want to say is that being on the HR committee, that there's no way it'll get to the county board without our recommendation, period. That's the way it's going to be. Because whether you try to sneak it by me or not, if I hear it one way or the other, it's not going to happen. You know. So definitely we're going to have our input on it. And if we don't like it, you'll know it. And if we like it, you'll know that also. Thank you. I hear you, Charlie. Thank you, Supervisor Cranwardy. Any other questions or discussion? I think you've had your three, maybe four, uh, uh, Supervisor. Can I make an amendment? Um, is there an amendment line then? Yes. Okay, Supervisor Rayner. Okay. Amendment for amendment. Thank you, Chairman, for uh, allowing me to make that make the amendment then. Um, so I agree with um, Supervisor uh, Epping uh, on line two, 290, page seven, and 290 through 293. Um, I, I'm, my amendment is to make the change to keep, to keep that portion of the, um, the ordinance the same as it has been in the past. Cheryl, you clear on that? Do you have, Carl? So you are restoring the strikeouts and eliminating the proposed new language? Up to, up to, okay, and leaving, leaving in to prepare a report for the board, which is lines 20, 295. So the process is still the same. It's just that who is making, I, I really believe, as Tom does, that having a constitutional officer, an employee, rather than two employees, making the pay decisions is more accountable to the taxpayer. So the, the process being the same, it's just the who, who is making that decision um, to change back to the way it was in the past. Constitutional officer and an employee. Well, and this is where I've got the dilemma because under the current ordinance, the HR director and the county clerk do nothing more than autopilot the retroactive pay increases. Right. The proposed language mm -hmm. in the new ordinance has the HR director and the administrator do an evaluative process on factors sure. other than the autopilot that the county clerk. So are you asking that we continue the autopilot process with the county clerk no. and the county uh, and the uh, HR director? No. So, so not continuing the auto process, having all the same process, it's just that we have the constitutional officer and the human resource to, uh, director um, make those changes. Just so we have that, the balance of powers there. Okay. So the constitutional officer will be part of the process of making recommendations on constitutional officers' salaries. As the process is laid out, you know, with the, with the process we have in place, yes. Which is a pretty, which should be a pretty cut and dried process. Okay, so now is I'm there... confused again. Okay. Do, you, do you want the county clerk and the HR director to do what they're doing now and what they did last year and two years ago, or, or do you want the county clerk and the HR director to do a new process utilizing the uh, position evaluations, comparable salaries, comparable salaries of non-elected department heads and other county staff? Yes. All right. I understand the, the amendment. Okay. <laughs> Is, it, is there a second to that amendment? Is there a second to that amendment? Supervisor, I'm sorry, I'm, Supervisor Glavin? I'll second it. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Is this debatable, Carl? Yes. Okay. Uh, Supervisor, uh, excuse me, Vice Chairman Marthenzi wanted to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have some good news and some bad news, and it's both the same. Uh, this ordinance won't impact at all the sheriff's salary or the county clerk's salary because 
if we pass it tonight, it won't get published until after the date for circulating nomination papers. I've already talked to Supervisor Procheck, who I assume is going to be on the HR committee again, and I talked to Supervisor Ott, and I think I talked to some other supervisors here about working on this process so we're not down to the last possible day to vote so these people get a raise. They have four days to go before they have to circulate nomination papers. If we don't pass the report at the end of our agenda today, they won't get a raise. They'll get paid the same thing in the next four years they got paid the last four years. That's eight years without a raise. As far as this process goes, this ordinance will take effect once published, which will be after the date to circulate nomination papers. And I intend to work with the HR committee in the coming term to change this process so that for the, the way I foresee it just in a general sense now is in August, a, 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 the HR committee would submit a, a report as, by resolution to the county board. It'd be, it would be referred to the finance committee. The finance committee would then pass judgment on it and refer it back here for inclusion in our budget, just like we do with all the other wages and benefits, so that in the odd numbered years, when our budget is, is passed and when this, uh, when this resolution would go into the budget, we would know then what the wages are going to be the following April, rather than this down to the last minute issue that we're facing now. And the way we got to this is the federal government moved up the primaries from September to August. And apparently we didn't take note of the fact that the date to circulate nomination papers also moved up a month. And that's how we got to the situation we're in right now. So no matter what you do on this, on this, um, this uh, ordinance, it will not impact the sheriff and the, and the clerk of the circuit court. It'll be in effect after it's published which will be after the, the date to circulate nomination papers. So the wages of the, of the sheriff and clerk of courts will be established by the old method that's currently in our, in our ordinances. I think I'm correct on that. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So right, our corporation counsel. Uh, the ordinance before this board will not be published until after nomination papers can be taken out. The state statute requires that the salaries for the elected officials be established by the county board before the uh, nomination papers can start to circulate. So therefore, as Supervisor Marthenzi stated, uh, this ordinance will not be in effect with respect to the salaries for the uh, elected officials. However, the old ordinance, the language that is stricken out here, is still in place because the new ordinance doesn't uh, supersede the old ordinance until it's published. The mechanism at the end of this agenda is the mechanism for setting the salary for these two elected officials uh, moving forward. The bottom line under any circumstances is that the county board sets the salary. The county board sets the salary utilizing recommendations or not utilizing recommendations. It's the call of the county board. So at the end of the report, you will see that, uh, at the end of the agenda, you will see that the recommendations that the uh, HR director and administrator uh, would have made had this ordinance been adopted without amendment are there for your consideration. So we need to address this by the end of this meeting, but it can also be revisited as Supervisor Marthense said with an amendment uh, when we're not under the gun. Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. Um, I'm really trying to follow this, and I really want the county clerk and the sheriff to get the, the setup and wages like is, that is proposed. I'm just wondering why we need to change the apparatus for doing this, if I, if I use the uh, terminology correct. Why we got to change the apparatus 
for for making these uh, um, changes. Why why do we got to change it? You you yourself said it. It, it would be the same as, as what has happened the past three years, and now we're going to change it to so, something different and have the same result. Why the change? Well, the result you received... Am I reading this wrong? Well, I think you're thinking it through from a wrong perspective. The bottom line is that the county board makes the decision. The county board can make decisions based on the best information that's provided. In the ordinance as currently set forth, the county board is given one recommendation, and it's not really a recommendation. All it is is uh, a calculation of what pay raises have been across the board for the previous four years for those uh, two offices. So it isn't any kind of discretion, it isn't any kind of a thoughtful, deliberative process, and you can continue to go on autopilot and receive a, a report from the county clerk and the HR director, which simply crunches numbers, and you can make a decision not based on uh, what other counties are doing, what other comparables are, or any of the other factors that are identified, you can continue to do that, or under any circumstances, you can do whatever you want because the ultimate decision is made by the county board. But if the county board wants to do it based on some factors that are other than rote responsiveness to calculations, this is a methodology that gets you there. Go ahead, Supervisor Epping. So, in other words, the county board, I understand the county board makes a final decision, but now we're going to change, change it. We're, we're going to make the decision based on information we, we receive from HR and from the county administrator versus HR and the county clerk. Right, but you're getting different buckets of information because the, under the current ordinance, the county clerk and the HR director yeah. just look at our budgets for the last four years and calculate what the retroactive pay ranges were for the last four years and puts a number out there. The new proposal is that you get a, a recommendation and an evaluation made based on comparables, based on uh, changes within the office as to uh, duties and responsibilities and comparables not only to other counties but also within the county to other department heads. So it's a different metric and by two different people but it's a different metric and that's what you're looking for, the best information to the county board. If I could ask one more follow-up question. Aren't those same metrics that, that the HR give us under one circumstances could, most probably are going to be the same metrics that they're going to give on in the second situation. No, they're completely different. Thank you. Okay, Supervisor Epping. Uh, Supervisor Wegeman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to suggest that we um, vote against this um, amendment. Um, I, I, I think it's pretty foolish. We've hired the county administrator to guide us, to help us, to set the budget, to oversee the budget. And he'll, his skill sets allow him to evaluate personnel and positions and roles and responsibilities. It is not within the county clerk's um, skill set to do that. So we'd be asking, you know, if they were going to use a formula, that's one thing. But what we're talking about is a different approach here. And, uh, and I think our county administrator has those skill sets, and that's what we've hired him for. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wegman. Wegman, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Dolson, did you want to speak? Supervisor Bemis, you're on. I just have kind of a question. I think if we're all kind of worried about the authority that the county board has, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think the county board can fire the clerk 
but I think we can fire the administrator. Am I right or wrong? I believe that is correct. Anybody else? So John? I will still uh, vote against the amendment. Okay, thank you. You want to speak on the amendment, John? Question okay. for Corp Council. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> Can uh, the board vote for Supervisor Uraner's amendment and still vote to accept the salaries that were presented based on the county administrators and HR directors numbers? Yes, because the salaries you set, the salaries that the county board sets are not going to be based on any proposed ordinance. You can repeal everything in this ordinance. You cannot pass, you can reject it all and it doesn't matter because for this year, for this term, the current ordinance is in place which provides that a report is made by the HR director and the county clerk as to what the cost of living increases were retroactive for the fa past four years. But the bottom line is that the county board makes the determination as to the salary increases, if any. Thank you, Thank you. Carl. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Cheryl, do you need some? We have to get the wording. I'll have to cut and paste here. Do, 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 do. No. Yeah, we, that'd probably be a bad idea. All right, Cheryl, this, uh, Supervisor Uraner, could you, Supervisor Uraner, Supervisor Uraner, I'd like to restate your amendment, and I hope I am capturing what your intent is. So I'm going to read it as follows. I believe the amendment would read, Section 5 would read, the county clerk and the human resources director shall calculate the anticipated salaries and benefits of the elected officials and shall prepare a report to the board setting forth recommended salaries for the elected positions. They shall evaluate the positions and shall consider the comparable salaries for similar positions in other counties the comparable salaries of non-elected department heads and other county staff, the changing duties or responsibilities of the department, the salary history for the position, the consumer price index U for each year as determined by the Wisconsin Employment Relations Commission pursuant to statute and such other information as they deem pertinent, they shall report the recommended salaries and benefits to the county board. Is that? Yes. All right. Okay. We have an amendment now. We might do an abbreviated.
Supervisor Bemis. I, w I was just kind of wondering. I mean, we're amending something we haven't had a motion on. Is that legal? There was a motion, Dick. It was so long ago that, uh, I <laughs> yeah, there was a motion. It was moved and seconded by Winkle and Epping. The amendment okay. uh, was Uraner and Glavin. Understand your question, though, Dick. Sorry. Yep. Problem. Okay, the amendment is on the screen now, so we're voting on the amendment. Yes for the amendment, no against the amendment. Roger, can you recheck yours, please? That motion's defeated. Four I, 19 nay, and two, oh, I'm sorry, four to 19. Thank you. Now we have the original motion. Any other discussion? Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. <clears throat> I think to keep quality law enforcement leadership and county clerk leadership in the county, I want to support this this motion to uh, provide good pay for these individuals. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Anyone else? Okay, seeing nothing, we will vote on the original ordinance number 12. as amended by the committee. <laughs> that motion is approved 21 ayes, two nays. Thank you, and I appreciate everybody's patience on the, the system tonight. Uh, consideration of committee reports, law committee, ordinance number 13. Regarding establishing speed zones on county roads W and TA, recommendation to enact. Okay, I need a motion on that. Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. I'd like to motion to uh, make a motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Chairman. Second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. I'm sorry, Roger. Um, is there any questions or discussion? Supervisor Epping. Uh, thank you. I don't know if everybody's aware of uh, the setup on Highway W that goes through Hingham, it's a very narrow corridor there. And uh, there are businesses along there in the past. There's been a, a big sale there and it's always been hazardous and stuff like that. So a reduction of the speed limit uh, along that corridor as, as well as the other one would be a good safety factor for us to approve. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Bemis. Vote no, because if I ever vote yes to a speed limit change, I'm sick. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Any other discussion or questions? Uh, Supervisor Otten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in regard to this, Taylor Drive was designed to move traffic from north to south. And right now we have three different speed zones on it. Um, and I don't know why this was brought in. Was it because of accidents? Uh, I have nothing in regard to that. Um, and I think we should make it all the same, rather than have, if we, if we put this at 35, there still will be some areas at 30. So it's kind of confusing for someone driving that all of a sudden they're in 30 mile zone and then they graduate to the 45 and then it's back to 35. That's what we have right now. Okay. And then when you get way out in the 
uh, industrial park, then it's it's 45 again. So I would like some explanation as okay. to why we're doing this. Thank you, Supervisor Otten. Um, Transportation Director Greg Schnell, you want to respond to that? Why don't you come up, Greg? It's the, you're on the mic. Otherwise. After you get by the sheriff. The piece that is 45 is the only piece that's in our control. The uh, city is in control of the 35 and the 30 heading to the south past acuity. Um, there's going to be a, um, a lot of work happening in the future along Taylor Drive. As you've seen the paths already, we're also uh, going to have a hospital there in the next couple of years. Um, this request has been uh, talked about from the Lutheran High School with, with people trying to get in and out of the access uh, to the UW. It's, it's very difficult as the uh, people are coming down the hill. The speed study that uh, we've done on it indicated that about 95% of the traffic is traveling at 55, closer to 60 as sometimes. So we're trying to control that speed by lowering the speed limit, making it somewhat consistent. I'm working with Aaron Brault as well as far as um, improving the intersection at Indiana, which is going to introduce a little bit more pedestrian and bike traffic, so that, that is going to be uh, another issue as, as we move forward. <coughs> Supervisor Rodden. Um, Dave, have we talked with the city at all about making this the same? The city, the city was one that came in and, re had, and requested the 35 as well. They, they've been having some issues. I've talked to Ryan Sazma, one of the guys that works in their public works department. He came to one of the transportation committees as well and spoke to it to try to get the 35 as well. Okay. Well, the design of Taylor, Taylor was, as I said, was to move traffic, and, and it has done that. It's done very well. Um, and I realize that probably the 45 is, is high. But I, I would like to see it all the same, all the way from north to south. I can speak with the city as far as the peace past acuity. I, I, I don't know how they would handle that, where that's 35, uh, 30 miles an hour. Uh, the other piece is 35. That comes from 23. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Otten, and thank you, Greg. Unless there's any other questions for Greg? Sure. Supervisor Wegeman. Maybe we should make our, our lowering the speed limit conditional on the city raising theirs and <laughs> split the difference. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, if not, we have a motion and a second out there to vote. Nineteen eyes, four nays. Thank you. Consideration of salaries for clerk of courts and sheriff pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 59.22. Uh, Carl. Uh, well, does the board have the, each of them? So you should have each. The first recommendation on elected official salary and then a report on elected official salary per chapter 47. Right, so the uh, business before the board at this time is to set the salary for the two elected officials that are gonna be on the ballot this fall. So and I need- if, if, you follow the if you follow the procedure that, but for the fact that we can't publish the ordinance before the paper gets circulated, uh, you would be considering the uh, recommendation on elected official salaries, the first document. The other document is simply what the ordinance that we have to have on the books uh, reports back. Okay, Supervisor Project. I make a motion to enact the ordinance. To, to enact the salary to establish the salaries as recommended by the administrator and the HR director? Correct. All right. Thank you. And uh, Supervisor Conrady. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Conrady. Any discussion now? Questions? 
Seeing no hands, we'll go to the vote. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Now I need a motion to adjourn. Supervisor Bemis. So moved. Thank you, Supervisor Binkle. Bemis and. <laughs> 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 it's been a long night. Anyways, I apologize. For the last time, Supervisor Winkle. For the last time, Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Please push your, keep your iPads open. So the votes are recorded. Yes. Is it working, Roger? They were tired by then. Working now. <laughs> Elaine, you want to help Roger and Keith? Done. We got it. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.